when it comes to the Air Jordan 1 Mid, you guys know that Jordan brand loves pumping out a ton of colorways every single year. Some of them are hits, some of them are misses, but this time around, I think they did a really good job on this new Armory Navy Air Jordan 1 Mid. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I do a lot of sneaker reviews on this channel and also on my second channel, Sneaker Talk 365, where I'm going to actually be, re re be reviewing the, uh, the low top version of this shoe. They released two versions of the Armory Navy, the mid and the low. However, they never released a proper high top. So if you guys wanna see the low top review, I'll leave a link down below. So when it comes to the Air Jordan 1 Mid, a lot of colorways are typically inspired by the high top version or the high top counterpart. Now there is no official high top Armory Marine Navy Air Jordan 1 mid. This is one of those Jordan 1s where it's a special case where the mid isn't sort of like a ripoff or they take a color away from a high. Now they did do the Obsidian Navy ones, I believe, a couple years ago that have like a tuple, a tuple, a little touch of gold on the jump mat. I'll have those on screen right now. So if you have that sneaker, you're probably not gonna be too interested in this one. But if you were looking for a pair of Jordan 1 mids that were gonna be around retail and are probably still sitting at certain Nike stores, I bought this on the Nike website, then this is a Jordan 1 mid that should be available to buy at the mall. Now this isn't a colorway I have seen at Full Locker or Champs or Foot Action, but if those sneaker stores have them in stock, I'll also leave them linked down below. But this might be one of those sneakers where it's like a Nike store exclusive and this isn't nothing new. Nike has done this in the past when it comes to other Jordan 1 silhouettes and just other sneakers in general. There is one shoe that does come to mind instantly when I think of Jordan 1 that is navy. And that is what I have right here under my table. It's in this silver kind of box. And it is a special kind of release. It's a uh, colorway that that was originally released in Japan. This is the Japan Co Jordan 1 Mid, and or not Jordan 1 Mid, Jordan 1 High. But the one thing that really sticks about sticks out about this Jordan 1 High is that the Nike Air tongue that a lot of people love isn't what is usually on this. So instead they went for this embroidery, not the typical tag we're used to seeing that is stitched in. From what I've seen on places like StockX, these are going for about 350 Canadian dollars or so. And this version of the Jordan 1 Mid is going for about 200. So if you wanted say a budget alternative to the high top version, then this mid top version is definitely something you might wanna keep your eye on. Now the shade of navy isn't exactly the same either. This is more of a true navy blue, while the shade of uh, navy on the armory navy pair right here has more of like a teal kind of color. You guys can see, it's not like a blue we're used to seeing. It's like a greenish dark blue. And before I put away the Jordan 1 High Japan Co, I just wanna show you guys the lacing options on this shoe and how you might wanna lace up the pair I'm about to show you. So here is the navy pair of laces on this pair. And on the other side, we have white. In my opinion, I love the way the white laces look on this shoe. So if you were considering doing something like a lace swap on this Midnight Navy or uh, this Armory Navy pair, then white shoe laces might be something you wanna consider for this particular pair. I think it is a genuinely really clean look. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about the white laces versus the black laces on this pair. This pair actually uses black laces. The highs come with like a navy pair. So it's not exactly a one-to-one -one kind of clone. Now when it comes to the Armory Navy Jordan 1 Mid, there was no official release date for the shoe as per usual, when it comes to Jordan 1 mids, there's not usually a specific drop date. They just pop up on the websites. Now, when it comes to the retail price tag of this shoe, I believe it's 110 US dollars. And in Canada, there's no price tag right here. So I'll have the price on screen right now, which I paid. And of course, I'll throw these on feet and talk about sizing in just a bit. But let's just talk about more about the shoe, the colorway, and the quality of it overall. So if you're a collector, you're gonna wanna know that this shoe does come with a black and gold Jordan box, something that's super typical with GR Jordan releases. Now overall, when it comes to the leather quality on this shoe, it's nothing really to be impressed about. When it comes to mids, I'm typically not buying a mid for the quality of the shoe. I'm buying the mid for the colorway. If you don't care about quality too much, I'm not saying it's horrible, but if you want a quality Jordan 1, highs are typically the way to go. And that's why people prefer highs over mids, besides the colorways, obviously. But when it comes to the quality of leather or pleather that they use, I believe it is leather. It's just a super, super cheap. It's not that great. It does feel very cardboard-ish and it doesn't feel like that premium leather. We're not even premium leather we're used to seeing on highs, but just the better leather, better leather we're used to seeing on Jordan 1 highs. But again, this is a very budget friendly Jordan 1 so do keep that in mind if you want to just wear these and rock these the quality of the shoe really shouldn't matter too too much to you in terms of leather quality overall they're still a very well constructed pair and they're gonna last you at least a year to two years of daily use anyways in terms of the color blocking for this shoe it is very very reminiscent of like the Jordan 1 high Chicago however the one area where this shoe really changes uh, compared to the Jordan 1 high Chicago's color blocking is that it has a 
a navy colored swoosh. Now the one highs, the Chicago one highs, they use a black Nike swoosh. So if you do have like one of those painting pens or say you're just a new customizer and have some black paint laying around, if you wanted to give these more of that OG kind of look, you could easily paint over this navy swoosh. One thing to know is on the low top version of the shoe, these right here, they actually went for the black swoosh on the uh, on the on this black swoosh on the swoosh, the black swoosh. So you guys can see a comparison side by side. And here you guys go. You can see a side by side comparison of what it looks like with navy on the swoosh compared to the black on the low top. I personally like the black a lot more. I don't know why they decided to go for the navy swoosh on these. It really looks honestly so much better with the black swoosh. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. I always love to chop it up with you guys down there. Taking a look at these closer, you have the white toe box with leather along with the white leather side panel with that navy blue swoosh on the side. Taking a look around the toe box, it wraps around with this armory navy colorway. And then you have navy hits going down the eyelets of the shoe up onto the wing area and side panel on the back of the shoe. You have this navy color as well with the Air Jordan Wings logo in white and it does contrast really well. Some people might not like that but I think it's a pretty good look for the shoe. White nylon tongue with black shoelaces and then you have that tag right in the center of the tongue with the white Jumpman logo there as well which is expected when it comes to Jordan 1 mids. Now as I mentioned earlier this shoe is pretty much all leather however the very back portions right here along the ankle and this little portion underneath the uh, the navy leather is actually a new buck material. So if you do get scuffed on these, like if someone steps on the back of your shoe, this can get dirty and it's eventually gonna show, show some age and wear and tear uh, compared to the leather. So that's one thing to note, they just have a slightly different material right there. And then taking a look at the booty of the shoe, and here's also a look at the outsole as well. The exact same outsole that we see all the time on Jordan 1. When it comes to Jordan 1 mids, they typically run it true to size. They have a pretty flat, uh, kind of construction. So if you do want to buy these, get your regular size that you're used to buying. And if you have a wider foot, it's really common for people with wider feet to go up at least half a size. Now in terms of comfort, the Jordan 1 is a pretty average comfort level uh, sneaker. I'm not really impressed by the shoe. If you want to be impressed by Jordan 1 comfort, definitely check out the Zoom Air Jordan 1s. They have the Zoom on the insole and it's super, super comfortable. But if you're buying this, you're not really buying this for the most comfortable shoe in the world. Am I right? You're buying this because you want to have some really nice put together outfits and you want that retro one inspired look on a scale of 10 I'd give these like a solid six six and a half out of ten I wouldn't put it any much higher than that some people live and die by Jordan ones they think they're the most comfortable sneaker in the world but after trying out tons of other sneakers out there there's definitely other options that are better in terms of comfort comment down below what you guys think about this pair and of course you can click on screen right now to go to my other channel and check out the sneaker talk 365 review of the Jordan one low version of of this shoe. With that said, check out my recent vlogs if you guys missed it. There's tons of heat sitting at the mall and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.